the videotapes of these online? Or? <laughs> <laughs> well, good evening, everyone. It is Tuesday, June 13th uh, at 6.03 p.m., and we're going to go ahead and, and kick off the Whitestown Redevelopment Commission meeting. First item of business is uh, a call to order. Present. 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 Thank you. Next item is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would now like to open up the floor for a, any public requesting to speak. If not, we'll go ahead and move on to the approval of the minutes from the April 25th meeting. So has everyone had a chance to review the minutes and so any questions, concerns, edits? Looks good. Looks good to me. Make if a motion. Not, we have a motion to second. Approve and a second. Uh, a second that. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Both say nay. Motion carries. With no unfinished business, we will move on to new business. And item A under new business is the consideration of a resolution approving the real property tax deduction for uh, Duke Realty Sanson Building 7B, which is RDC Resolution 2017-7. So. Dex, would you mind talking us through some of the highlights of the, the application? Um, this does come with uh, what's next on your agenda is really what's driving this. Um, pretty good company with a, a, a recognizable name um, would be a tenant in this building. I think, would it be the only tenant, Kate? This would be the only t tenant in this building. Um, it's very, been very standard for us to approve abatement for the uh, major buildings in, in Anson. As a matter of fact, I think everyone has had a, every building has had a real property tax abatement. I don't see why, any reason why um, we wouldn't do this here, especially since a tenant is uh, rapidly and potentially uh, coming on, on board now. Of course, uh, that's pending approval of incentives and the companies. Uh, acceptance of those incentives, but just the mere fact that uh, buildings continue to be built in all points is uh, says a lot of good things for us. Absolutely, and to confirm for item A is just the real property side. Uh, can you or Kate kind of talk through the square footage and the investment involved in that? Yeah, I'll have Kate come up and talk about that. <coughs> Bid rolls, welcome to join as well. Kate M's Duke Realty address is 600 East 96th Street, Suite 100, Indianapolis 46220. So the building will be owned by Browning Duke LLC, the joint venture of Browning Investments and Duke Realty. It'll initially be 400, about 400,000 square feet uh, for a single tenant with the possibility to expand by about 130,000 square feet in the future. So the assessed value for that type of building is usually about $39 a foot. So I'm sorry, I didn't move my calculator up here, but I can do that math for you guys. Uh, thank you, Kate, for coming. Um, great project. Uh, does anyone have any questions for, for Kate while she's here representing Duke and this potential project? No. Mm -hmm. Seems pretty standard. <laughs> yep. If not, we'd like to go ahead and entertain a motion to approve. Um, RD, RDC Resolution 2017-7. I'll make a motion to approve RDC Resolution 2017-7. A second. We have a motion and a second. With that, I would like to go ahead and uh, entertain a vote. So all those in favor, uh, please say aye. Aye. As opposed, say nay. Motion carries. Uh, on to the second item of this project, which is a consideration of a resolution approving personal property tax deduction for Project Ghost, which is RDC Resolution 2017-8. And again, we have uh, Dax is able to help talk through the uh, 
the application, and we also have Ben Rural um, that can also maybe answer any questions regarding this project as well. Yeah, Ben is here. Um, it's pretty uh, four years, um, a 25 percent <coughs> step down each year my, uh, on the personal property abatement in this application. There's one thing in the application that um, I wanted to make clear with the attorneys. Um, I think it's on page seven, and it's, uh, I think so. Um, and that was a, a, an ask for $100,000 in cash for relocation expenses. Um, and that's not a part of this resolution and not a part of, uh, necessarily part of the abatement application obviously that's something that's up and above and I just want to make it very clear to you that you approving this resolution does not approve a hundred thousand dollars in relocation expenses because um, number one we just don't hand out cash number two we're, we're not doing that for this particular project it's we're not moving a headquarters operation here we're moving distribution jobs so um, the, the, the abatement is four years personal property four years 25% step down um, I think that's a pretty good uh, that, that falls within a reasonable ask for uh, personal property especially with the job numbers they're pretty good numbers um, I mean they're not you know knock you out of the park type uh, positions but it, it is a it is a distribution facility um, but it is name recognition it does get a, a building another building built in all points so we staff definitely is is uh, in favor of this request. So with that point that you mentioned that we aren't going to fund the $100,000, like it, that, it's not coming from us and us in this basement. No, we, we are not. It's just what they asked for in their application and we're saying. No to that. That's so wonderful that you put it in there, but thanks, but no thanks. Okay. So the resolution will not approve that particular item. It's just wanting you to be aware that it's in the application. Okay. Well, it's, it's uh, un, under other potential incentives okay you're approving a tax deduction application but that's you're not approving a hundred thousand dollars in cash which me and i will tell you you really can't just give out cash anyway so <laughs> thank you dax and thank you for the team from the boone edc and duke for helping uh move this project along hopefully add additional assess value and new jobs to the area but uh has anyone had a chance to review the application? Any additional questions for Dax or Kater Smith? I don't. I can make a motion to approve RDC resolution 2017-08. Is there a second? I'll second. We have a motion and a second. I'd like to go ahead and call it for two votes. So for those in favor of approving resolution 2017-8, please say aye. 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 Those uh, opposed say nay. Motion carries. You're not going for Robbie Halford's record here, are you? Hmm? You're not going for Robbie <laughs> Halford's uh, get out of here as quick, quick as possible record. It's are you? nice outside, <laughs> minus the rain early. Uh, we'll have to call welcome, him. Though. Yes. We'll have to we call him and it. tell him. What was Robbie? Seven minutes. <laughs> yeah, I think it was like seven minutes, thirty seconds, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yay nay, yay nay. Out, bye. <laughs> Perfect. Well, as we move along, to not going to beat the record, but we can get close. No. Next item is item C, which is the consider a resolution of the Whitestown RDC 2018 budget year determining for TIF revenues, which is resolution 2017-9. You do this every year. It's a requirement by the state to basically tell everybody what, what you're spending your money on. Mm -hmm. um, if you're keeping any excess, why? Um, nothing much has changed. And it's required by June 15th, so yeah. yes. we'll meet our deadline, you'll be good. No pressure, anybody. <laughs> make Questions? A Concerns? No, Entertain I'll, a motion. I'll make a motion to consider the, or approve, I guess, the budget. Mm -hmm. Approve the resolution 2017-9. I will second that. I have a motion and a second. We'd like to call it to a vote for resolution 2017-9. So those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Motion carries. Moving right along as continue the beautiful economic development work is considering a resolution declaring an 
an economic revitalization area, or an ERA, for approving an application for real property tax abatement for Triform LLC, which is Resolution 2017-10. We have an uh, application or resolution. Also have Terry McCardwell from GDI Construction that can also answer any questions, but would like Dax to talk through any highlights. Yes, yeah, so the council has heard this item. Um, they have passed their declaratory resolution. Uh, you're second in line. What this is, is there's not an ERA. An ERA has not been created, so there's two items here. You're creating that and approving abatement at the same time. Um, as we've just talked about, as has been a, a standard procedure in town, and really standard, sometimes unfortunately standard across the country, is uh, the approval of a spec abatement um, to make a building marketable. Um, Maybe someday we'll change that, but that's a bigger discussion for a different day. Um, so uh, I don't see any reason why we wouldn't give uh, GDI the same marketability as we've given everybody else, um, which includes pretty much every industrial building that we've put up, whether that's in all points or peri-industrial or new various property. Um, this is the same thing, so 10 years standard. Um, for the Fishback Creek Business Park, which is the is north, just north of Amazon, corner of 500 East, and Alvarez White. As Dak said, this is nothing that we haven't done before for on both sides of the interstate for all of our business parks. A spec abatement it kind of gives a GDI and, and the Boonie DC the tools that they need to kind of help with the speed of market and make that building much more attractive. So uh, I think this is a good thing, uh, but would love to entertain any discussion. If not, I will entertain a motion. I like that we're keeping it pretty standard. <laughs> Take a, uh, I'll make a motion to consider resolution 2017-10. We have a motion. Is there a second? I will second that. Perfect. And we have a motion. A second. We'd like to go ahead and open it to a vote. So for those in favor of approving resolution 2017-10, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Motion carries. Uh, Final item on the agenda is something we've talked about for the past couple meetings, which is consideration of CF1 forms in the process for, for doing so. This is uh, compliance forms that, as we just approved some abatements, where all uh, companies that receive uh, a tax abatement or you know, tax deductions need to submit these forms by May 15th of, of every year in order to continue to receive those benefits. So uh, we have received some, um, not all, uh, but we need to take action on those that we've received to make a recommendation to the town council for what we've received and also the ones that we haven't. So if Dax, if you or Dennis would like to talk through any highlights that, that we have here. <laughs> on the mound, I think Dax here. better talk through them. <laughs> <laughs> um, Bill Browers. I don't know if these are working well. but. Um, you know, we've, we have talked about this quite often, and, and starting right now, I promise you as a board that 2018s will be incredibly organized. We've talked to Molly briefly at the EDC about helping us organize and actually be the ones that remind the companies that they have an abatement. Montgomery County does that. I, think, I don't think they're alone. I think a number of counties, EDCs actually are in control of the SB1 CF1 process. Um, I today and I, over the course of the last couple of months I sat down and, and one thing that we don't have organized is is when an abatement is passed we, we probably need to have a database we've got databases for everything where we write down resolution number number of years is it an MOU for spec which hasn't been built yet which means that it doesn't kick in immediately until it gets assessed so like Duke building 15 was a resolution passed in 2008 What's well, just now getting built, so that abatement, although we may think is about to run out, hasn't even started. Um, that makes it a little bit confusing when we're doing spec abatements. So all told, I, I went through, it looks like active abatements right now we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, Eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. Is that real and personal property? That's every abatement's been passed since two thousand and seven. 
So that starts us with uh, 2007 dash, uh, I think it's in here, eight or something. Now those are running out. So that'll be the, pretty much the 2007s, 2018 will be their final abatement years. Um, of those, when I can see so far, uh, and I, we need to do a better job of understanding so that we know, we do not do a good job of this. I will just admit to that, okay? Um, when the court treasurer gets a CF-1, the court treasurer probably has no idea uh, what it's attached to, how many years are left, how many CF-1s should we be getting in every year. Um, not done a good job of that. We will do a better job in 2018. What I can see so far is that there are some CF-1s that are not uh, here that uh, have outstanding SB-1s. Um, of those, Duke Building, um, We've debated this, 19, which I'm gonna say probably has an assessment, mm -hmm. um, and a CF-1 was probably required, uh, would be one. Uh, Duke Building 7A, which is 2012-9 is the resolution. I do have Duke um, Resolution 2012-13, which is Building 14, and Duke, we do have a couple from Duke Realty. Uh, building 14, Building 7A, which is re Resolution 2012-13 and Resolution 2007-, um, uh, this is for Building 14, uh, 8, I do believe. So we have a couple of those. We have a couple of Dukes that are missing. 2012-9, um, which is Duke 7A, 2010-8, uh, which Kate has helped us on, that they, Duke no longer owns the Amazon building. I have not seen a CF-1 from the current owner of the Amazon building. So that's 2010-8 was the expansion of the Amazon building. 2008-35, um, uh, which is building 15 from Duke, it has not been assessed, so we will not have a required um, CF-1 to my knowledge, so. Uh, Weaver Popcorn has a probably the one of the biggest personal property abatements ever yep. proved in the county. And that's 10 years, 100%. And if there's a CF1 we should have, certainly it's theirs. Yes. And it's not in this pile. So even though it's late, I think I would probably send a correspondence to Weaver and request that they certainly um, get one to you. Those are the ones that, uh, of all these I went through, everything else seems to be here. Um, I, ha I have not seen uh, anything glaring that uh, I don't see that we have at this point. For the ones that were received, uh, did you see any red flags as far as comparing them to the SP1 forms? And the you know, we have like Vrooms. Um, they've struggled in the market. I don't see any reason though why we can't, you know, when we pass incentives for a, a true startup, we have to understand what we're getting ourselves into, right? right. Um, they are in the building, they are doing business, they are, they are working out their economic and financial troubles, or not troubles, but um, hiccups, and I, I see no reason why. I wouldn't recommend, of all these that we got, I went through them pretty thoroughly, I see no reason why we wouldn't recommend the council approve uh, uh, yet again their their abatements and, and uh, accept the CF ones for the C, uh, for the SB ones and I had a chance to review them too and for the ones that we had I didn't see any uh, items of main concern to that but uh, would like to somehow address the, the CF1 forms that we haven't received because this is a true partnership and we're playing with uh, with taxpayer dollars I, I think the least that the companies could do is, is submit that form on an annual basis as long as they're receiving the incentive and Many communities require all companies to receive incentive to, to come and report from the, the council or the RDC on an annual basis. We're not requiring that, but the least that they can do is to submit the annual forms so we can go ahead and ensure that they're meeting what they initially agreed to do. So, But would like to um, see if you want to be willing to give a rep recommendation to uh, approve the CF1 forms that we've received thus far um, so the council can take official action on it. I will uh, seek approval of the current CF1s that we've got to get in front of town council. Second. I second. 
Perfect. So we have a positive recommendation um, for uh, from the RDC to approve the existing CF1 form. So I'd like to go ahead and uh, call that to a vote. So those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Motion carries for the existing, or I guess for the CF1 forms that we've not received. Uh, do we need to discuss protocol for that or, or a recommendation for the council on the ones that we haven't received? I would certainly suggest that um, correspondence be sent to the companies or developers asking for their form even though it's past the due date. Um, I don't know if we want to go so far. What, what is the, um, if the state is this strictly us? Does the state ever even consider, since the CF1 is a state form, so is the SB1, uh, although they, I know they leave it to the locals to, to, to manage and enforce those. Is there any penalty from the state for not? Yeah, so the penalty is all on us. I'm, I'm assuming that we could, we could not uh, extend their abatement if we don't have their form? Yeah, we could call them out for non-compliance with their abatement application. And, uh, you know, part of the abatement application, and you'll see in the resolutions, <coughs> contemplates sort of annual filings of the CF1s. Um, I mean, kind of what I would recommend is we send a letter saying, hey, the deadline's passed to receive CF1s. We haven't received yours. Please notify us. Why not? Send it in if you haven't, okay. if you've overlooked it. And mm -hmm. if you've got a reason, um, kind of like you said, back some of those buildings, maybe they haven't been assessed yet, but let us know and give us an update. Um, then Dennis on our side, are you familiar with GASB 77 as far as the local reporting requirements for tax abatements now on the federal level? I, no, I haven't heard about that one. Uh, some I'd like to talk with tax about maybe see if you could look into that as yeah. well in, in the future because there's becoming more requirements on the local level for um, reporting the incentives that the, the, the municipality yeah. provides to companies and, and how this could eventually provide backlash to uh, municipality in the past if we don't have all this information and not reporting it to. Okay. You said that's GASB 77? GASB 77. Okay. G-A-S-B. I'll, um, I'll take a look into that. That would be good to know. I'll talk to Gary about that too. Okay. See what he knows about that. So would it be on us to set a standard of how we would want these companies reporting these back to us moving forward, or would that fall more in line with the town council? Well, the council ultimately is the decision maker on extending uh, an abatement. Okay. So although you're granted a 10-year, they run out every year, yep. essentially. Yeah. They have to be extended each year. Um, you all are, we, we give the, we uh, as a municipality give the Redevelopment Commission some authorities or, or uh, 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 steps in the process that other municipalities don't. Um, you technically don't even have to approve an abatement if I'm correct. That's right. Um, even in a uh, redevelopment area, that law changed I think it was two years ago. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we, we require that still to happen uh, much to a company's chagrin and sometimes the economic development corporation but it is what it is um, I would certainly say that you would be a good group to recommend to the council how we move forward on on CF1 reporting um, does a company have to come in and give a presentation I mean it's a lot of presentations <laughs> <laughs> right um, but Brian brought up a good point. There are some communities where the company has to come into the mayor's office and give a presentation. And I, w I would say at least a, a letter, a detailed letter um, explaining the year that the company has had um, is a, would accompany the CF1 form. Um, right now what we get is very legal, uh, standard cookie cutter requirement uh, language in any kind of cover letter. But something a little more detailed that shows, you know, we came to you on, in 2009, you passed resolution blank. Here's what we, we told you on that day uh, would happen. Here's where we are now, and this is why we are where we are now. Um, it, it makes it a lot easier for us to have to go through this, go back to the resolution, 
you know, that's what we're having to do now. Not that we shouldn't do that, but go back to the resolution, look at the SB1, look at the application, see what they wrote down, see where they are now. It'd be nice if they had a one-page executive summary every year of what the CF1 form uh, contained. Because yeah. just in my mind, would it fall on us to come up with some sort of resolution or some sort of standard to maybe give to the town council to recommend this is the dates or process that we would like to see these CF1s coming in. I love that. Yeah. I, I love that. I love it. I think it's great. Town council passes a resolution and sets in motion the policy for submitting CF1s to Whitestown. And I think we need to work with the EDC, yeah. Molly, Ben, um, on seeing if they have the ability and the staff and the resources to help us with. Because they're the ones, really it starts at the EDC, mm -hmm. They're asking, they're, they're asking us to approve an incentive uh, for a company that they're working with. Right. And uh, that makes some sense. Mo Molly was, she didn't seem to, I don't want to put too much burden on her sure. and her staff. Um, but it seems like something that could, they could add some value added for what we uh, invest into the organization. And that's a meeting I'd like to be a part of too to discuss next year and moving forward and what's the best, like you said, process on, on how we can better organize this moving forward and make all of our lives. A lot easier um, but for the forms we didn't receive um, I think we talked about having a letter coming from the town to the companies that didn't go ahead and submit just uh, for a reminder to go ahead and, and uh, complete the form and maybe a little short description on uh, where they're at right now and, and their process as far as what their existing um, requirements that they set forth in the SB1 forms so we can have a better idea of where they're at Sounds good. We can do that. We'll send that out immediately. Do you need a motion for that? No, I think I've got your direction. So perfect. Well, any other discussion on that? If not, would like to entertain a motion to adjourn. I will make that motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Have a good night, everyone. We didn't, we didn't really talk about it, but just some of you guys probably, you probably already know, but we closed on those bands. I know we, we sent around a bunch of documents for some of you guys to sign, and um, that closed up last week with Cintier Bank. That Everything went well on that, so appreciate you guys being available, and Kyle, especially you. I know that was yeah. kind of, you had the last second rush on that, so. Well, 